All right, here we go. We are live. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode number 107 of TXR, the best place to kick back on a Sunday night and listen to passionate talk on all things Xbox related and always so much more. I am your host, Invader, and we've got a wicked show set up for you tonight. Joining us, we have David Preen, the Senior Director of Xbox Hardware Engineering. David, welcome to the show. How's everything at your end? Doing great. Thank you very much for having me. Of course, of course. It must be a pretty busy time for you, you know, being with the new controller launching and everything, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah, it was a great launch and I've uh, been super excited so far. But yeah, you know, this is the time where we start scouring and looking for all the positive and as well as all negative feedback. So ton of time, just checking it out. Awesome, awesome. Now, before we begin, David, let me just introduce all the show panel members. Jeremy, ready to go, sir. Mr. Joe Montana? Sir, <laughs> sir, how we doing? David, welcome again. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Who else do we got here? Uh, let's see. Tim, Mr. Tim Dog, you ready for tonight's show? Oh, well, yeah, I'm ready. Mr. Elite, Mr. AK, David Preen. I'm very uh, honored to have him on the show. Thank you for coming, David. Thank you very much, Tim. All right. All right. Uh, Centurion, uh, you excited to start up tonight's show? Oh, I am ecstatic. It's really good to meet you, David. And I mean, I I feel blessed right now to even be part of this group and to actually sit here and chat with you, David. Yeah, thank you. I don't think we we haven't met in person, have we? No, I will be truthful. I am new to the community since February of this year. Oh, well, welcome. I've been on here, you know, several times. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, there's a few new faces on the show, uh, Centurion, Shock, and including myself. So, uh, you know, definitely something to get used to. But thank you for being on. Uh, let's see. Who else do we got here? Megatron, my man. How's things at your end? What's up, everyone? Everything is great on my end. I'm ready to get this uh, show uh, rolling and uh, pick the brain of one of the great ones, <laughs> Mr. David Preen. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> of course, of course. Southie, Southbound. How are you doing, bud? Hey, I'm off the penalty box. Nice, nice, uh, nice. <laughs> no, you know what? I'm just, uh, you know, another beautiful day for TXR and just blessed to have David here join us to, you know, pick his brain a little bit. Like, like Megan Shaw said, he's one of the great ones. And, you know, I've, I've had the fortunate to, to have known him for a few years now. And he's just, he's a really, really great guy. And I just, it's really honored to have him in here with us. And uh, thank you very much, David, for joining us. Wow. Well, you know, Southie, always here for you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Much love, brother. Awesome, guys. We're just waiting for our other member, Shock, to pop back in here. I think he's... Oh, there he is. I'll just... Uh, here we go. Shock! Mr. Shockley! How you been doing, bud? Pretty good. Um, and thank you, David, for joining us. That's uh, it's a pretty cool opportunity meeting with, uh, you know, someone that designs the actual hardware that we, you know, play every day. So, <laughs> But yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Awesome, cool. awesome. Yeah, no, again, uh, it's uh, awesome to have you on here, uh, David. And, you know, before we get into all the panel questions, Jeremy the Downer would like to do a quick mm -hmm. review, a bit, a little bit of an overview of the Elite 2 controller, and then possibly do a bit of uh, background on you, David. So take take the floor, Jeremy. All right. Well, so here's my, time. <laughs> so here's my Elite 2 review. Uh, you know, the most important answer... Uh, or most important question, I should say, is is it worth $180? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, it's a noticeable upgrade from the original. Uh, overall, it's much better, more solid design. Uh, the buttons are more firm. David, awesome job on it, including the back paddle buttons. No more accidentally hitting them when you're playing the game. <laughs> um, I like the uh, three configuration option. The grip on the triggers was uh, is awesome, an awesome addition. Uh, the solid home button, man, threw me off a little bit, but I was I was pleasantly surprised on it. It just feels more, uh, just more solid, you know. Uh, my favorite feature is probably the tension adjustments in the joysticks 
and obviously the charging case. So um, you can even go back to the 360 tension, believe it or not. So it's it's probably the greatest controller ever made. So uh, dope. Yeah. So good stuff, David. That's my review. <laughs> <laughs> He's waiting for the shoe to drop. Solid. <laughs> he, 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 he said solid three times. <laughs> No, that's 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 good. That's good. I mean, that's it's always good to hear. I mean, what did you mean by hitting the the button though? That was one I hadn't heard before. You know the the home button. It's a solid. It's solid. It's not you. You can't push it in anymore. It's just a solid oh, button. Oh, I'm sorry. By home button, you mean the Xbox logo button? Like, yeah, the Xbox know? logo button. The Nexus button. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. want to say Nexus, but I think only about one out of ten people know what that means. But, but the Nexus. <laughs> Yeah, we purposely engineered uh, the Nexus button actually to be different. Uh, the last Xbox One controller that came out, um, you know, the one that introduced the Bluetooth, there was a lot of complaints that it was too shallow. Like you would put your uh, thumb below the top housing. So right. Was when there's a lot of things, especially when we when we put features to that button, when we do like double taps or single taps or long presses, short presses, all these kinds of things, people are like, I'm constantly like, either I don't know if I'm hitting it or I feel like I'm not going far enough. And so we wanted it to be very analog, like very click, click instead of being a bit mushy. Um, so yeah, we did that on purpose for the same reason we would do anything on this controller. Like uh, I think you mentioned it as well. The, the paddles on the back, we change the switches. They're actually the same switch um, to give you a lot more clickiness and a lot right. less of a missed feel. So you kind of know you're hitting it. Oh yeah. Mistakes. So uh, yeah, both those switches, we, we, we spent a lot of time on finding the exact right, what we consider the amount of depth, but the amount of force needed as well. Good, good stuff. It's great. Great controller, David. Awesome, awesome. Now, Jeremy, did you want to touch on David's background a bit, or should we dive right into the questions? Oh yeah, he's he can do that for us. He can, <laughs> he can dive in the back. <laughs> oh, wow, well, way to pass the buck there, buddy. <laughs> way to go, downer. <laughs> I mean, I, I can help you. I mean, real quickly. I mean, I spent most of my career in the mobile phone industry, but um, that was like the first you know, 18, 20 years of my career. But since then, I've, I've, I I gave it all up because all I wanted to work was on Xbox. And pretty much as soon as I got here, I took over the program, which was the elite, the first elite. Um, I think I've told a few people, or actually the ironic part is the elite was actually just supposed to be the very first Bluetooth controller. It wasn't supposed to be all the things that it was. Um, we kind of made it to be something different. And ever since then, I've kind of stayed there in the, group making kind of slightly different things. So I did the uh, original lead. I've worked on a couple of things in the background. Um, and then I did the elite series two, but I don't know if everyone knows here, but just to make it hundred percent sure, I actually wasn't the person that brought it over the line. It's actually a gentleman named Alan Carranza who a couple Alan, of years ago, yeah. We, yeah. Um, we took it about, you know, 80% of the way, but Alan did the actual work to get it over the line. So I don't want to dismiss how much work they did to finish up. Because I don't, I mean, I think I know a couple of you know, but I am actually the lead of Scarlet. Um, right. So mm -hmm. I spend more of my time on the Scarlet world. I still spend <laughs> on the controller, but obviously Scarlet's the big program uh, coming out for Xbox. I'm spending more time there these days, but super hey, interesting. Well, well, you know, See, that's really why we got you on. The time please, please but tell, me, <laughs> tell us more. <laughs> Scarlet. But David. <laughs> David, you gotta tell us how did the name Scarlet come about? You gotta tell us, man. You gotta break some news here. Uh, Why did they, I have my ideas about that, but how did they specifically put Scarlet in there? I don't think I'm allowed to talk about that. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Right. Let's put it this no, way. It's gonna be red. That's why. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you you want to hear my thoughts on it? When we started the program. <laughs> It, it, it's just funny how you get from one to the other because obviously we were playing on Scorpio originally and there were lots of snake names and <laughs> pythons and boas and weird names. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's a, what we were going to do and stop start program. Lions, Somehow Scarlet was the one that... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'd love to say there was this perfect little answer for it, but 
it really was just because that's kind of how it worked out. <laughs> Um, it's the one that, that actually so because the Xbox and the, the gaming wars is just a scarlet letter. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I think you probably couldn't say anyway if if it did have some kind of meaning because usually it, it it ties into something within the Xbox. But uh, off of that, can you uh, go back to the Scorpio? What was the uh, idea of the Scorpio or behind that? And can you go into that? <laughs> no. No, no, there really is a rhyme or reason to how we name things, but I can't give you that because I give you how things get named. All right, all right well, just a suggestion, David. You know, if if you would like to, you know, pass along a possible uh, name for uh, Invader, you know, the Xbox Invader. You know, just a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Beast fire. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's, there's definitely like a lot of projects where we, you know, like especially when you make, so when you make new consoles, and then you make all the accessories and all the sub assemblies and all these things. The names do sort of all work together, but there are times where you're kind of in between major launches where we do get to make up the names whatever we want, mm -hmm. and that's why there is some pretty goofy names out there too. But believe it or not, they, uh, they kind of took some of our creativity away and we sort of have to have a database we have so many because of us and the surface programs we all share a lot of of the systems mm -hmm. yeah. so we've uh we have so many projects because we have to name every subsystem externally we name things internally you know so we do all this stuff we have to do with naming conventions that we've literally have thousands and thousands of them that we actually now have a database to make sure we <laughs> really use names. See this, you this just draw them out of a hat or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Between that and then you have to make sure it's not a fence. You know, it's, it's got to be cross-cultural and inclusive. So you got to make sure the name is, is pronounceable. You got to make sure the name uh, doesn't offend it's anyone. like naming a storm, tropical storm or hurricane or something. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. It's that complex. Like it literally, like you'd think it's this easy little thing, but it's, uh, it's a pretty big deal to name. Oh, like, you guys have a ton of them. All right, Durango, Durango. No, it's funny. You, you you brought that up about you know being like culturally insensitive and stuff like that. Well, I mean, we've seen you know the whole blacks and gaming thing recently. It, it you're always constantly having to worry about stuff like that. It it it, it kind of you would think it'd be stressful just worrying about a stupid name. Yeah, I mean, I hate to call it stupid. I mean, like that's what I mean because it is very important. Like we're this is a name we use for years internally, so it's it. It means something to us, but I agree. I mean, that that that's why we kind of go through what we're going through now. Is they actually, like I said, there's actually a database that has a artificial intelligence that actually comes up with names for us. Like it's it, it's just cool how it actually it's that it's that right. it's actually that cool at the same time. So here, this is an easy one. You know, obviously you can't go into details about Project Scarlet, but what's your what's your specific role on the project? Can you tell us that? Sure. I am. So my role is I am the head of all the PM team. So the program manager team of the hardware team. So what that means is the owners of the project. Now, here's the thing about a Project Scarlet. Project Scarlet is massive. This isn't just like a headset or something or just a mic or just even just a controller. When you get a console, so a Scorpio level one or even Xbox one, but think about it. This is even a generational change. So think how big Scorpio was and how many people worked on it. This is a generational change. So you have thousands of people working on this. So my team, what we do is we're the ones that actually work with the original team of what should it be? What should it include? What kind of hardware should it have? Um, we create business profile. We can create how we're going to do it, what hardware is even capable in that time frame. And you're doing this all years in advance, mixed with where we're going to sell it, how we're going to sell it, what it should do, you know, what kind of accessories is it going to come with, everything. So my team, we have I have dozens of PMs that work for me that work on either subsystems or something. So something like the mechanics, like I have a person who just does mechanics. I have a person who just does motherboards. I have a person who does everything all the way up to then. I have a person that owns the controller and a person that owns, um, you know, even like getting parts. Like I have a person whose sole job is just to do factory builds. Um, so basically my team, what we do is we own the project end to end, meaning we own everything top to bottom. So everything from concept to designing it, to developing it, to building it, to shipping it. 
Wow. All right. All right. What I don't do, to be fair, is we have, and my group is actually very small. The hardware team is relatively small compared to even the team that makes Surface is about 10 times bigger than we are. Hmm. Um, oh, wow. Our team that does the games, our team that does the platform, that does live, does Mixer, they're ginormous and they are a strong team and we work 100% day to day with them. In fact, it was public about two months ago that our team, for the first time ever, moved to that team. We actually actually used to report to the team that made Surface, but now oh, we, okay. we are now officially in Phil's Phil's organization. All right, all yeah, right. For the first time in years, it's great. No, no, that that would be the old the old realm would be like uh, Panos. Uh, would he yeah. be like the a part? So, it, it, so this is basically it's it's inclusive it's inclusive to itself, meaning to Xbox. So. You're, would you would you say that if you equated it to back then, would you be the Panos of of, of Xbox? The, uh, mm-hmm. No, yeah. that, that would be that would be somebody over that, right? So, that, so, Phil, so Phil is you know the uh, you, yeah, and that's a tough question. Industry stuff, but I mean, Phil's always been the head, even when he reported with Pond. They never he never reported upon us. They were like counterparts, right? But now he reports directly to Satya, so directly to the CEO. And then with, I have a manager, it's called GXP, which is game experience and platform. That's who I report to now. And we have a VP. Her name is Liz Harmon. She's my boss. And so my boss reports directly to Phil. Oh, wow. That's really cool stuff. Cool. Cool. So David, obviously the Xbox Elite Controller Series 2, it's finally out. And a lot of us already have them in our homes, in our hands, and there's you know, a lot of people raving about the new upgrades. So what is your favorite new addition to the Elite 2? Um, two things, which is hard for me to always differentiate because because of the first Elite, I've always believed that the grips were the most important thing. And the reason why mm-hmm. my fingers just, I, I'm not as young as I used to be. So if I'm going to play for an extended amount of time, my my most important thing is actually being able to have grips and these grips that come up are on the sides are what I always wanted. But the original elite series, we were kind of using the old design, which had these end caps. But if you, I don't know if you can actually see the controller, if you got one in front of you, but now there's just one, there's a top and a bottom and that's it. There's no longer these end caps. Oh, okay. So we were able to bring the, the grip all the way to the top. And now actually the where, where, 95% of all gamers put their pressures on their palms. And so it's kind of on the sides, not on the bottom. So the location of it's better, but that's not really a new feature. That's just kind of perfecting an old feature. But the adjustable tension is the actual, was, was my always my dream. We wanted to do that on the original so bad. We just didn't have enough time. But I was a huge fan of the 360 tension. And so I got the Xbox just when the new controllers came out, and everyone, including myself, were like, I really just want the old tension back. And so mm-hmm. this like adjustable to me is still super, super key to me that that you know we pay homage to the old stuff, but we're giving you the ability to do both. Oh, that's fantastic. That that's really cool. Uh, Megatron, uh, what would you like to ask? Um, for me. Uh, I was always on the fence on whether or not, like, should there be an internal rechargeable battery or not? Like, how'd you guys come about deciding, you know, which way or the other to, to go, you know, for say, yeah. like, believe it or not. So this, this is a tough one. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously I have as many people that don't want it, that do want it. Um, in fact, I probably have more that do these days, believe it or not, percentage wise, but we were trying to do this years ago before people got into it, but I put a slide up to uh, Phil and to a couple other people on the board and showed what the average number of batteries our gamers are using in a span of two to three years. It was just a picture of literally a, a bowl of, of all the batteries they use. And then we put the math of how many people use them, like how many people we sell controllers to. And then I sh- showed this whole dumpster full of batteries. And uh, so the reason I actually did it was um, for, you know, environment. I actually thought for environmental reasons, even though we're using lithium ion, uh, which still has other downsides, uh, but overall the carbon neutrality of it all is we are way, way better than we used to be. 
um, when you think about double A's, even if you use cheaper like in loops or one of these cheaper kind of lithium ion batteries, um, we purposely made this thing as great as it could be. And But honestly, one of the biggest things we learned uh, on this controller and our research was the idea of how batteries work, what they could do, how fast they die, how fast, you know, not, not just die per charge, but die over lifetime. Um, I'm really, really hoping everyone that uses this controller for what we did for this battery is going to actually be pleasantly surprised. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if everyone. I don't know if everyone on the, the the call has this, but certainly for everybody that's listening, do me a favor. First time you get your controller, or even if you already have it, but you've started using it, do me a favor. Pick a night, charge it to a hundred percent, then don't charge it again until it's dead. Not when the light comes on, because I'll, there's a reason for that. But until it's dead, and tell me how long it lasts, and tell me you're not super happy with that. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, Shock, uh, what would you like to ask? Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, one thing I was uh, looking at with some of the other features you put in there, I saw you also put in like the new USB-C, which is a nice, great, awesome upgrade. Um, but do you have maybe some of these features, or you think with that carbon footprint you mentioned, is that the way you're, you're we're probably going with the next, if you can possibly answer that, <laughs> um, <laughs> like in the next Scarlet controllers, like possibly rechargeable out the gate or possibly USB-C in the future connection? Uh, I mean, as usual, I can't talk to what we're going to do for Project Scarlet, but oh, got you, I guess got you, got you. from a company, uh, so the USB-C, and just to make it clear, because we try to make it clear on the website, but I want everyone to know here to an audience is, the USB-C is a physical connector. It's not Thunderbolt, right? Like a lot of people came to me and said, oh, it doesn't, it's not full Thunderbolt charging and it's not. And um, the reason we actually did it, believe it or not, uh, because of that, without Thunderbolt, you don't get the fast data speeds or anything. So uh, a lot of people do question me of why we put USB-C on there then, and you kind of hit on it, which is, it was actually for accessibility. Um, we have lots of people that uh, have issues plugging it in as it is with the micro USB. So the beauty of the USB is, you know, it's independent, so people don't have to turn their hands over. Um, mm -hmm. So it's easier connection, or it's, or think of it as a blind. I mean, whether you're physically blind or not, but a blind connection where you, how many times you were trying at night and it's never the right way. <laughs> um, so we actually did it for accessibility reasons, but definitely as a whole, we're trying to be more accessible as a company, and that's why you'll start to see. USB-C more in our own stuff as well as like the Surface programs are doing the same thing. Oh, okay, and I did want to mention on that Elite controller, I know we, we can replace the like the sticks. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you guys planning to ever sell those like by themselves, or I might be mistaken if you guys are to do? It's always our intent. Uh, we did it in the very short term uh, on the original Elite. Um, but we had a deal with Scuff, and Scuff was selling them for a while. Um, I'm not sure where we are with partnering on who on the second party for this controller is, but I know we intentionally want – we would love for there to be a bigger ecosystem. Like, we want someone to pick it up and run with it as well as we do, too. Like, we have – the problem with it, of course, is – what we don't want to have happen, just like any of our third-party programs, we have a really, really strong third-party licensing team. Um, but the problem would be like the paddles are a great example. If the paddle, if you ever take the paddle off, you'll see these like little bumps and weird curves and all this stuff that's going on in that geometry. The whole reason that is, is because if it's not the exact right thing, it'll shear the switch underneath. So we've got hard standards of, oh, if you're going to do it, you have to use these kind of materials and you have to use this design. And so, um, especially on the Elite, the last thing we want is some third party or a non-approved third party company coming in and you know making it seem like there's something wrong with our controller kind of thing. So we, we, it's, a, it's a tough bar to meet, but we're always looking for those companies. And there are several companies that are interested in this. We just don't have anything fine that I can talk about yet. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Uh, Centurion, what would you like to ask? Uh, we'll start off with a simple one. Um, how long was the uh, pre product? Basically, how long were you designing the controller before you actually started getting it into physical reality? Like, 
um, how long was it in the concept stages? And was there things that were in the concept stages that you didn't have time for or just thought there it wouldn't be feasible to put them into the new version? No, that's a good question. Um, honestly, we were working on this before I launched the original Elite. Um, a great example was, like I said, the adjustable tension. I would have loved for that to be in the original Elite, but we just couldn't financially or technologically get it you know, across the line in time. Um, so we've really been working on this since, I don't know, what is that, 15 or something, like 2015? Uh, we did put it on pause for a little bit just because we had some higher priority projects like Scorpio. Uh, but we've, I mean, it, it just took a little bit of a break, but it, it was overall, we've been working on it basically since then. We, it, It's a fine line of, I can always just put more lipstick on it, right? But is it really worth it? So whenever we do elites or anything we do in this, certainly in this level, we don't do it just for the sake of doing it. Everything on here is either tested that it's truly does what it's supposed to do or else it's a new feature that you, like someone hadn't thought of yet. But there was a ton of refinement on this thing, but there was also a ton of new features. And so we didn't want to just put something out for the sake of saying, oh, look, it's just a new black one or, you know, it's got a little more grip on it. We had to actually say, like, why the grip is where it is and what texture it uses, you know. Uh, and meanwhile, also fix some of the stuff we did. But everything we did on it, it was because we were in the field and we're asking. And so it's a hard decision sometimes of how much do you put in versus how much do you charge? Um, we have features we could put on this thing for sure, but I'd have to sell it for three hundred dollars. <laughs> And uh, but we spent a lot of time on in the field looking at uh, new ideas mixed with we we basically and that's why it took so long. Not only did we have our own ideas for so something like the adjustable tension, but when we would go into the field, we were in the field for like a year after the original Elite launched, just learning like, how, well, how do you actually use this? Like, is this like, it, does anyone, is it, I don't know if anyone wants to talk about the charging case. I know it's never fun, but <laughs> it's actually one of my things. But what we found was 75 to 85% of the people were actually keeping their controller in the case at night. We're like, okay, well, that's fine. Like, so that's why when we thought about the charging stand, we're like, well, if 75 to 85% want to keep it in there, we might as well make the charge stand where it works in and out is where it came from. It's an awesome I, idea. I actually, yeah, I actually keep it in the case at night when I charge yeah. it. He, yeah. he likes to put it to bed. I like to get a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> got a little blanket he puts over it. <laughs> I put actually, a lock and key. You might want to put a padlock so my so kids don't get into it at night too. That's that's my problem right now. <laughs> well, does anyone does anyone remember? I don't know if any of you guys here remember, but getting the first elite, uh, when you open up the gift box and you open up the case, there was a piece of foam in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that little like, rectangular yeah. piece of foam. Yeah. I still have mine. <laughs> See that? Did exactly. I still have it. You know what that was for. That was Whoop. two days before we shipped. Two, literally two days before we shipped. We realized when you put them on a pallet and if the pallet dropped. So, you know, not something that happens very often, but we test that kind of stuff. We found that every once in a while, the paddles fell off on the control. Because I don't know if you remember, oh, they wow. put them on the controller. So the paddle would fall off. And, and we didn't like that. I mean, no one wants to open it and have to put these pieces together. Yeah, hey, there's the film. <laughs> <laughs> So this was literally days before we were supposed to ship. And we're like, no, nah, we don't want to do that. So we went down. We literally went to a, a local store, a local one of our vendors where the factory is and said, hey, make us a shape that looks like this. And they did. Well, we were in the field. Like I was literally in Asia. I was in South America. We were in North America. Half the people that still use their case on a daily basis left that piece of foam in there. <laughs> That's insane. So I was like, well, I would have made it look nicer if I thought it's supposed to be like a plastic you rip off of something. We were like, oh, I would have made it look black and like painted or something if I knew people really wanted it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that, Most of us hate this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give it a cute little pillow uh, just, you know, cushioned inside there. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, South, what would you like to ask? 
No, you know, uh, David, as you know, you know, I, I, every now and then I'll text you, like, hey, man, something's wrong with my stuff. So, I, you know, I always complain to you, you know, because I'm, I'm a dick like that. But uh, as you know, like, I, I would have problems with the original Elite with the, uh, the, the what they called, the grips. Uh-huh. My grips would always tear apart. So how did you guys go about, because obviously you upgraded it for the Elite Series 2, how did you go about, you know, testing it and getting it ready to to – Upgrade it for the elite two. Um, so Kyle, you know, <laughs> this is gonna sound kind of cheesy, but um, if anyone knows me, <laughs> I spent a lot of time on Twitter looking for stuff on Reddit. Um, so what what we actually did was, I mean, we do a ton of pre testing. I mean, we do tons of pre testing. We have chemical baths. We have all the kind of stuff that you would think. Because everyone's always like, oh, the glue came off. Or if anyone doesn't know, there isn't glue under it. <laughs> it actually was called two, it's a two shot uh, injection mold, which basically means it's fused. It's at a chemical level. There isn't glue. Right. We bonded. Um, so we test these things all the time. I mean, against every major normal chemical, we have a whole like chemical a lab that does this stuff, things like UV, heat, thermal, you know. So when, so when something like this happens, you're like, how does this happen? And we didn't find it right away, at least not to these kind of numbers. Well, because it seems like, uh, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it seemed like that was the most uh, issue you guys had when it came to the elite controllers. It was it was the stupid, you know, uh, grips. Yeah. And so it, most of it was end of life, or not end of life, but certainly not out of the box. And so trying to find not out of the box failures, you usually have to spend a lot of time, like kind of investigating because it it's more end of life now. So even if it's not literally end of life, but it's not out of box. So we actually we actually went online and tried to find a ton of people with actual grips problems. And so you're like, hey, look, I'll give you a new controller. I'll send you a game. You know, my bad. Here it is. Send me yours immediately. And so we get these units back and we send them to like, I'm talking, this is like straight out of military level stuff. We send them to Spectrum Analyze where you go into chemical analysis and the pieces to see what did it what did it absorb and why did it you know and you know some of these are easy some tips are easy and quick other ones take five six seven weeks to get done so we're working with internal labs external labs trying to find like i was i was interviewing people and it was you know you don't want to be rude to be like hey what kind of hair products do you use what kind of cologne do you wear what do you do you lotion on your hands like no it, it's funny you mentioned that because i was starting to think well, do i have sweaty palms or something because you know that that was my big <laughs> yeah. issue was the grill i'm like so i didn't know do you use hair products it's the it's it's the cocoa weird. butter <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you spend all this time and you're trying to figure out what it is. And like, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, it happens more in places where it's more temperate or no, higher humidity. And you're like, you were, we were all over the place trying to find this one. So it took a long, long, long time to figure out what chemicals we actually figured out were kind of hitting it. Um, and even then, it is surprising. I know, I, I know no one wants to hear this, but it is surprising how many people go on Reddit, Reddit, how many people go on Twitter and complain that don't actually have a problem. I talk to hundreds of people where you're like, dude, I will send you a new controller. I'll send you a headset. I'll even send you a Scorpio. Give me your unit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, man, it was my brother. And I'm like, fine, hook me up with your brother. And they'd be like, oh, no, you already sent it back to the store. He's good. Don't worry about it. And you're like, you wrote 27 things uh, like me to die. <laughs> and you're telling me <laughs> And so it's, you know, I wouldn't say we weren't, we weren't, uh, in, you know, it was important to us. We wanted to fix this, but at the same time, everything gets blown out of portion. I'm not saying we didn't, you know, that at the end of the day, we were doing everything we could, but, you know, I'd love to say it was as easy as you just go out there and you find something, but, there was a lot of misconceptions. Let me tell you. No, you know, and I, and I love that about you because you know when I when I had the original leak, you know, it was just like a button was sticking. Just it was something minor, but the way you attacked it, you're like, here, send it to me, or you know, and I'll replace it. I mean, you, you like it was literally your baby, and you had so much care about it, and to try to get down to the problem and to to, to rectify it was amazing. That that kind of customer service kind of resonates when it comes to Xbox. You guys want to make it right and to to fix it, so. 
that's what makes it better for the series too, because you know you guys are gonna stand by it for for years to come. Yeah, it makes me you wonder know, because really you're, you're is, investing money. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does make me wonder because mine is in pristine condition. Like I just had it on camera, and I put some quite a bit of hours on it, and still mm-hmm. it's like perfect. Outside, a little Cheeto stain here, maybe a little Skittle stuck there, you know. But it's just like it's it still <laughs> works absolutely like mm-hmm. like clockwork, perfect. Absolutely, so, same here. Yeah, I was afraid to use it for a while. Now I'm using it with the Outer World, and I'm loving the. And I'm talking of the original, yeah. um, and then I love it. Yeah, Tim, what would you like to ask? All right, I'm going to change gears here. First off, David, we've been asking some pretty tough questions, so thanks for answering them and we're trying to or, you know, just taking them in general. Um, my questions in regards to uh, at the beginning of the generation, this generation, uh, Xbox was kind of more focused on Connect and uh, certain things that they were, you know, you know, you know, doing, and then they came with the S, and then, of course, we got the Elite, and uh, for me, the Elite right now is the best console ever made. Um, how how much in your in in the in planning for Scarlet is power and speed um, as part of 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 the focus? Is that would you say that's a high focus? Um, and being very powerful, is, is that something that you guys are striving for, or do you think it's more or less of a balanced thing where speed, power, and, and certain things to, to get the games to run, um, or is it more of a, you know, a CPU thing um, with frames per second? Uh, what, what would you say that, but overall, would you say that power is a, a central, uh, you know, thing that, that Xbox is looking to do with, with the uh, Scarlet? I mean, I can't talk too much about Scarlet directly, but obviously power is important, it, but it's it's very subjective. And so I, I've told people this before, but you're going to reach a point where power doesn't necessarily mean anything, even to the top users. I mean, top users, there is a point where how much latency can their human eye or the, the hand even see? And I'm talking about, I've worked with pros and timed them and done things in super slow and like how much, like even watching their eye movements, mm-hmm. the on-screen latency and things like that. And like the human body can only do so much. And don't get me wrong, we're, we're, we're getting there as an industry. This isn't a, this isn't an Xbox thing. PlayStation has the same thing. Um, as a whole, <laughs> Our hardware is already so incredibly powerful. Everybody's is. Again, I you could even go, I mean, you know, we've all, it's always a joke, right? I mean, like, hey, my calculator today has more power than NASA did to launch Apollo 13, right? I mean, who really care? I mean, so it's all about power, but, but know this. Yes, of course, on the side of a box, everyone's going to want to say they're the most powerful no matter what generation it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's about how you use the power. Um, a great example is we were talking about power recently and we were having this exact debate of what power means and does power. So instead of thinking of consoles, think of cars, right? Mm -hmm. Muscle cars and you got Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Well, if you really look at straight up horsepower, the muscle car is going to probably win, but which one actually does better on a track? Right. The problem is you hit handling. Where, where you can keep putting, you can keep boring out as many cylinders as you want. I mean, there's a reason they make cars that are V12s, like spiders and stuff, but so what? I'll take a Ferrari that'll destroy it any day. Right. Um, like a great example is we were actually discussing something about this once. I was trying to prove a point to one of our teams, and it was this guy had a brand new M5, and he was like, look how fast it is. And I was like, I'll destroy it with my four cylinder and he's like no you won't i'm like all right let's meet in the parking lot and we go down there and he's got this brand new m5 you know 500 and whatever horsepower and it's badass and i show up on a motorcycle and it's been a <laughs> he was like well that's not fair that's a <laughs> and he, i was like it's only got 113 horsepower how much does yours have and he's like i was, I was like i'll do you zero to 60 zero to 100 i'll outbreak you and i'll outturn you what's power Right. So 
it, it, you know, we hit a point as an industry, this is an Xbox thing again, but right. power will always be important on the side of the box. It'll be important to people that want to say who's bigger, who's better, but you know what? Performance is what is really counts. It's not power. Right. I know that may come out weird, and that doesn't. No, make- no, it makes sense. It makes sense. It, obviously, we're we're reaching a point like you're, you know, you have 4K as a ceiling right now, and you know, you also have 60 frames per second probably as a ceiling. But you're right. We're we're reaching that point where in a lot of games, even even uh, you know, uh, the Scorpio is is doing a 4K 60. I mean, you look at what what they did with Gears. It's amazing, and to think, you know. Uh, you know what these next generation consoles are going to do. It is going to come to a point where it's just uh, what well, diminishing returns. I, I think that's the word that they use. Like it just comes to a point where right. um, I mean, it is. I mean, you, you look at it. The, the, even the announcement, we, the short little tidbit thing we were in. I mean, <laughs> that's why no joke. My name on Twitter now was Mister Eight K. They started calling me. With yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's like literally like Eight K. Great. How many people have an Eight K TV? <laughs> gotcha. Watching 8K is probably like you know, hey, look, here's a mountain lion. I watched this or the snow leopard for three hours, and it's like, okay, like it's great that we could do it, but is that really what matters? I mean, it, it, it's great for one day, and the content would be, and that's why we're designing Scarlet. That's why PS5 and Scarlet. We're all about having all those numbers, and we will. But it's really going to be about where the industry goes in the next couple of years of how people want to use the power versus and perfect that power versus just saying, oh, I'm a I'm V12 instead of a V10. It's like, all right, great. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, we got some awesome people in the chat here already listening into our discussion. Delilah HD, Shizno Elite, uh, BZ McNasty. Who else do we got here? Siberia, how you doing, buddy? Lots of faces in here. Clarence Finn, Peter got a, Sark. Got a lock in the chat. <laughs> Marcus off guy. Oh, Lock is here. Nice. Yeah, Lock's in there. Yeah, <laughs> very Paris, Lock. nice. Very nice. Very nice. And again, David, thank you for you know coming here to answer our questions. Uh, now, has there ever been any discussions about adding features that are kind of reflective of other console makers' controllers? Obviously, the DualShock 4 has a share button and a touchpad, and the Switch's Joy-Cons have a capture button. Has there been any interest in adding such features? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you look at the Elite, we're asked all I don't know if you, um, I don't know if anyone's really tried it yet. But if, if you have the Elite, too, go use the new app and see what it can do. I mean, we not only can we do capture, you can make any button. Have it, does everyone know about the share? This is a very interesting one. How many people on how many people in this discussion know that there's a shift key on Delphi now? Um, I didn't know. <laughs> hmm. so, you guys know, here's a very interesting thing for a lot. And by the way, this, this isn't surprising. Either. A lot of people don't use paddles. But I, it, it, people actually apologize for that. And I'm like... You don't have to apologize. They made them removable on purpose. Like, good. Like, <laughs> I, I don't care if you use them or not. But here's a reason to keep paddles for a lot of people that don't. Any key on the Elite can now be a shift key. And so think of your computer. What that means is when you're holding the shift key, so if you program the top left paddle to be a shift key, your A button can do something different while you're holding that. Hmm. Wow, so that's pretty amazing. Cool. So what that means is you can say capture that, share that. What, what I can't remember I, UX right now. I hate to admit it, but uh, I think it's share. Maybe it's capture. I'm trying to remember. Uh, anyway, if you if you program it to capture or volume up or volume down or power off or you know you can map it to system features now already. So you can do that just straight up. But a lot of people are like, oh well, I don't want to waste a button. Like if you're going to put a button on my controller. Let me decide where it goes. Like, like there's some ones we can't touch. Like we already talked about the like the the menu and the settings and the nexus. We can't really touch because you don't want to get trapped. But we purposely gave people because people that was this is one of the feedback from the original elite was oh well I don't want to waste that button to make it a system command. So we said fine. How about we give you a shift button where any button. So now you can have up to three other mappings. So even if so if you use the the profile key, you can even have different shift keys. <laughs> wow. 
Um, so for games where you don't want to give up a paddle or games where you don't want to use a D-pad or whatever it is, you can swap it around. Um, but yeah, you actually can do uh, like share and capture and all that stuff, let, let alone any system. Well, not any system, there's some you can't, but anyone that's mappable uh, directly from that. But yeah, go, go take a look in the, the accessories app. That's, that's kind of funny. That's like another game changer. You know, there's some real, real minor that really could be potentially big that you really don't know unless, like you said, you explore the app and, and you know, find out for yourself what you can do with it. Yeah, it's funny, the marketing. Like, I know Safi, I know you, and I know Tim Dog, and a couple other guys know him. But, you know, if you know James Shields. Yes, um, sir. You know, Great guy. You can only put so much in a marketing document before people are like, all right, look, you lost me. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> you got too, like, there's too much to do. Yeah. And so we actually try to make it a bit simple. And then we try to, like, over the next month, we try to bring these out and kind of say, hey, have you tried this feature yet? Hey, have you tried this one yet? Um, but go and yeah, go to the app and check out the shift menu. It's pretty cool what it can do. All right, I'm definitely going to check that out. Yeah, that's so, awesome. <clears throat> so, so David, how was the development process different from the original Lee? And what were some of your challenges that you faced? That you guys faced? <laughs> interview question, or like, a, like a job <laughs> interview question. Uh, no, no. Gary's professional <laughs> douchebag. You should know that. Uh, no, it's, it's a really good question. Um, the difference between the, the original Elite and the second Elite was the amount of people that knew what we were doing, why, and were interested. When I started with Microsoft and came to Xbox Group, as I said, the original controller was supposed to be this, like, Bluetooth controller. And everyone was like, yay, we need this to, like, hook up the things. And I was like, okay, back then there was no mobile. So it was like, all right, for the few people that wanted it for PC, it would be nice. But that was about it. Where I was like, hey, why don't we do this? Which is like, you know, a large population of people kind of want this like cool thing. And literally I was arguing with my boss who was like, no one would ever want to do that. <laughs> who would ever pay money to have something like that? And I was like, come on. And so we spent a long time like arguing that. But by the time the second one, you know, when we, if everyone remembers, it was a little hard to find for the first six months. And there's a reason why. Yep. That's because a lot of people didn't think it would do very well. I mean, everyone knew it would do well, but we purposely only built so many so you didn't, you know, like have a bunch of stocks if you want kind of thing. And well, correct, correct me, Ryan, David, didn't you actually use some of your own budget money to produce more units? Well, when you say my budget, not... My well, budget. I'm talking about the, 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 <laughs> the, the budget for the, the, the project budget. Yeah, not, not we, your... we did some creative things to get more, for sure. I mean, we were... And I think that... And that's kind of where I'm going with this. When we got to the elite, the number two, all of a sudden everyone said, hey, <laughs> this is like a real thing. And people that, you know, that weren't my standard, like PR people and Marcom people, all these people that really don't know it that well were like, Oh, this is like a real product. So yeah, people are really excited about this. So once it got really big and all that, we started on the new project, all of a sudden everybody and their mom wanted to come to meetings and tell me how I should do the next one. Mm. But the problem was all of a sudden we went from kind of being this, you know, stealth program or a skunk works type program to all of a sudden being one of the top programs where everyone thought, hey, this is what we should get a piece of. David, you're a superstar overnight, brother. No, yeah, it, was <laughs> it was the other way around where it's like people all of a sudden were like, well, now thanks for the first part. Now we're going to take over. <laughs> it was like, you know, like, oh, you just got lucky. And so all of a sudden you had everyone in the world literally trying to tell us, oh, you need to put this on it. And you need to not do this. And we need to partner with these people. And you're like, no, no, this is we've got hard design principles. And when we make a leap, this is what we do. We do whatever we do, we do for the right reasons on this product. We don't just put stuff in. I don't put the kitchen sink in just for the kitchen sink reason, like just so I can charge more. And so the question being of like, um, were there features that we had thought of or not thought of and all that, or were the things that didn't make the cut? There were lots of them. And there are lots of things we can put in. So when we compare ourselves to our competitors, there's definitely things where, don't get me wrong, like I love the DS4. Like, you know, you guys know me well enough. I'm a gamer on any system. I don't, I don't care mm -hmm. what. I I play the DS4, and it, it it's a, it's so much better than DS3. I'll be realistic, but it is uh it is better than than ever. But I don't use the the touchpad that much. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's there. It's nice, and it does on the games that you need it. It's nice to have it, but 
our big principle when we did all this ethno research, like this ethnographic research around the world, we're like, you know, do you want a LTD on your on your controller? Do you want a touchpad? And people are like, I don't look at my controller when I play. Why do I need an LCD on it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Everyone world, yeah, everyone in the world is like, well, put an LCD on it. And you're like, to do what? And the only example people can give me is Uno or Madden. <laughs> like, those are like the only examples and i'm like i'm not gonna put an ltd on so i can play uno yeah that's true there yeah but that, that's what i was there for now yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. all right megatron what would you like to ask well i guess since you're talking about adding things and stuff what about like customizing the color of the controller you know you guys ever think about you know kind of teaming up with design lab and maybe uh giving the people that are fans of this awesome uh controller uh the options of you know changing the colors a little dash of red and you know green here or purple there or you know one of my favorite controllers you, you know the, the i guess the first gen elite was the uh, gears of war uh elite and i love that design and then i always thought to myself well wouldn't it be awesome to be able to just kind of customize you know my own thing you know my own look yeah you guys ever consider that at all or Yep, every public appearance I've ever made. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we would love to do it. The problem is the sheer numbers. Um, oh. We'd love to do it in a way that made sense and we're constantly... So back to this point, if everyone want, wants a piece of it, of course the XDL program would love to do this. Mm. But, I mean, think about it, though. We The materials we use and all this stuff are not... You can't just, like, color it. Okay. I mean, don't get me wrong. You should see what the XDL team does have to even to make most of those colors. They do full testing. They do everything they need to do. It's not like they just make a blue one, like a blue top case, and everyone just goes, oh, okay. Like, literally, there's a ton of testing. Well, the problem is all the testing we do for Elite is, like, 3X. So the amount of cost per piece. So what it would really come down to is I wouldn't be surprised if one day we had more choice, like a couple choices. And if it does really well and people actually buy in quantity, my guess is it would grow. But the fear always is, you, you guys know what it's like. You've seen the press. Anytime I put something out, the first thing it doesn't, well, you know, first for the original elite, it was $150. You got to be kidding me. And then, it was, you know, for the current one, it's $180. You got to be kidding me. So if I go in and try to make it XDL, everyone's going to be like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So yeah, because the, the price only goes up from there. You're looking at, you know, $200. Right. And, and that's exactly it. So everyone, and then all of a sudden, so my manager is like, no way. No one's going to buy enough. You know, we can't keep that kind of stock. And I think it's going to happen. I think it's a matter when. And don't forget, for the original one, we actually partnered with Scott uh, for the first, I forget, two years maybe. I can't remember how long, maybe a year or two. But yeah, we actually partnered with them that they were supposed to, I don't know if anyone remembers, they actually did have a, a modified version of, this, of the Elite. Yeah, but wasn't it like 250 bucks, 300 something like that? It was like crazy expensive. Yeah, well, I mean, Scuff has their own pricing structure, which is obviously different than ours, and, and they can do it the way they want it. We don't, we don't get to set their pricing, of course, but, but that does give you a good glimpse into it's not – the problem is, again, if you're only going to make a small portion of these parts, it's, it's very expensive because, you know, when you sell a large number of something, you get to amortize the, the investment. But when you only mm -hmm. make a – so like this, what I'm saying, if I make a top case, let's just say purple, you know, well, no one's ever made this rubber, you know, the grip material in purple. So I have to go out and actually prove this material won't fade, UV doesn't bother it, all these kinds of things. So it's a really tough thing to just make colors and then sell only a couple of them. All right. But, all right. Well, we'd love to see a small, a small, like I, my ultimate goal one day when I'm working, because it's not my team, it's, it's a team I partner with, but is to be a small a small palette uh, at least it may, it may not be if you go in there today and there's dozens and dozens of cool colors and materials and finishes i'd at least like to see a small and i i, I think that's not impractical over the i'm not saying anytime soon though but um mm -hmm. certainly. that'd be cool like maybe like a forza edition maybe a limited run like how you guys did maybe gears or you know that uh halo is coming out pretty soon hopefully I would love so to I just wink, wink. Really want to partner with me. All right, <laughs> all right, very cool. Uh, Shock, what would you like to ask him next? Oh yeah, um, I was thinking about this one. I luckily my coworker, I didn't get my hands on one, but he did, so I got to try it out uh, yesterday. So that was pretty nice. 
Um, and how did you guys uh, came up, come up with how you were going to do the removable thumbsticks this time? Like which ones you were picking? Like last time you had two tall ones, two short ones, mm. and like two dome ones. Yeah, what we found was it was it was you know that's a very, that's actually a really good question. Um, the reason why is because it was a debate we had for a long time, even on the original. Um, what we found is if people weren't playing the the ones we normally use, so our ours, you know, the Xbox style, we found they were only usually playing one and one, <clears throat> and a lot of the feedback was they wanted more shapes. But we kept on saying, I was like, well, if there's not a pair, how am I supposed to ship this many pairs? And we kept getting the feedback, I don't need a pair. I really just want one for this thumb and this for this thumb. And so that shape we came out now that's kind of like a mid-tall mushroom style with the ridges on it is was was the most requested size we had other than the standard, even more than just a regular tall um, so we kind of went back and forth. This goes back to one of those cost things again of like, okay, I could have put eight pairs in there or 10 pairs, but most people just pick the one they want and stick with it. So it's not really fair to start charging everyone. So kind of like to the same question earlier about new paddles or new, new heights or things like that. I still think we could have multiple kits available and that's what people could buy, um, is still our target, but we did find we did much better with just adding, um, a couple of new ones with the new shapes, but we did a bunch of ergonomic studies and people really kind of, people really did like it. Like it went, it went really well. The studies were tough, but like, it was definitely a back and forth. And I, you know, this will be one of those things that almost immediately I'm going to go back out in the field and get really good feedback on, do you like what we picked or not? Do you want pairs? Do you like them split up? And we'll, we'll go back and forth on that a lot again. Oh Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, you know, it's definitely interesting when, you know, you talk about the research going into it. You know, obviously, we don't think about it that much. We're not privy to the information, but all the research and testing that goes into it. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, Tim Dog, do you have a question to ask? Um, no, I just uh, really appreciate uh, David coming on. You know, he... Uh, weathered uh, the storm. Um, yeah, I, I do have a question, a uh, quick one. Um, are you going to XO? And uh, if you are, um, are you excited about it? Uh, no, I'm not going. I was going to go. I actually had tickets. I had, I, have every, I had everything I needed to go. Um, but we are, <laughs> not to make it sound cheesy, we're in a critical place for Scarlet right now. And so the mm -hmm. team decided myself and a few others that were going to go. We decided to stay and work on a couple of things. I wish there's, I was going to go. There's Mikey saying hello to you, David. Yeah. Mike hey, Mike. Barra. Mikey Barra. Nice to see you, Mike. Yeah, thanks for uh, jumping in there, Mike. Uh, welcome. Hope you're doing well over at, uh, you know, Blizzard. Must yeah, be. Well, welcome to SoCal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw him taking in the uh, the Rays there. <laughs> Uh, Southie, yeah, definitely different in that Seattle. Yeah, man, Southie, uh, what would you like to ask, David? No, you know, honestly, it, it's not so much a, a question for David. I just um, like going from the the first to the second, and you know, and obviously, you said you got about eighty percent done before you moved on to you know heading up Scarlet. Like, was it hard to let go of the reins, or were you like, you know, what? <laughs> I'm I'm getting a you know, a promotion. See ya. Like, <laughs> how, what was your mindset about that? You know, like, was it hard to let go or you just said, all right, you know what? I'm moving on to bigger and better things. Well, first of all, it's not a promotion. It's just a, I, you know, I, <laughs> you want to, you always want to work on like the biggest and the baddest and all that. And of course, you know, even, even when it's something your baby and like, if anyone knows me, I've constantly called the series to my baby just because that was the one I, the first one I wanted to get across the line. I wanted to prove the product was there. I wanted to do a lot of things, but we didn't get to do a lot of designs that we wanted. So in the series two with things like the adjustable tension and some of these things we really, really wanted in the first one, it was my actual baby was to get a series two out. And so it was hard not to do it. In fact, actually there's a couple times where not only is it not me that was the PM to get it over the line, but I even, uh, it was a separate uh, sub team. So like South and a few others, there's, there's James Hunter and his team 
Uh, yeah. They took it over from me because they took over accessories the way we were cut up at the time. So I, there were times where I purposely walked out of meetings or didn't go to meetings because I knew I would have an opinion, but you got to let them do their own product. Like I can't walk in every five minutes and be like, but this is how I would have done it. It's like, no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it, it is, it is kind of hard to, you know, it's it kind of like, you know, when, you, when your baby grows up and goes to college or something, it's kind of hard to, you know, loosen the reins a little bit. You know, you like you want them to prosper and spread the wings. But at the same time, you're like, wait, that's that's mine. You know, so a lot of the focus would be, you know, obviously, you know, you're letting go of the reins of that. But you like you said, you got bigger and better things when you're talking about, you know, the next generation of consoles. So it, it, a lot of it has to focus on that or you just say, you know what, it is what it is and just move on. No, no. I mean, I always had a vested interest. And of course, I, we didn't give it to a team we didn't trust. I mean, we knew who was finishing it. And they're a great team like James Hunter, Alan Carranza. And those guys are a great team. And we knew they were going to do well. There, there was never going to be a problem there. So by giving it over to them, like what I'm getting at is it's the day-to-day -day little twitchy things that, that, that you don't need me in the meeting for. So it, it's let, you know, I'm also a manager, <laughs> like I'm a people manager. So I want, it's great seeing Alan launch a product like that, right? He's one of our new hot PMs and it's great to see him get it over the line. So it's always good to even also see someone's career go through the career. So I was more than happy to see that happen. Because, yeah, it almost sometimes you kind of have to walk out of the room because if I don't, I'm going to nitpick the little things. And the little things are where they get to exercise their muscles and actually learn how to be a great PM. So because they're the ones that are going to be working on the next one, not me. Oh, so, man. you know, it's kind of a. No, it's funny you mentioned Alan because, Alan, you know, we, when we at E3, we talked to him, you know, a lot. And, and you could see the passion about the elite two that, that he was talking about and you, you could tell that like he was excited about it and you know and this, it's a lot of hard work for all you guys so you know it's just uh, we're we're consumers you know what i mean so it's just we appreciated it may, maybe not as much as you know as you guys you know to get they like said across the finish line but it means a lot to us that you guys put a lot of blood sweat and tears in, in these products that we love so much and you know yeah it's, it's, they're expensive and all that but at the same time we, we appreciate them. We use them every day. And it's just, you know, we, it's just, like I said, you just appreciate the effort and, and the the love that you guys got for, you know, your products. Yeah. There's certainly a lot of love in our team. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now we, uh, uh, we got a few more questions if that's okay, David, obviously, you know, uh, you know, we appreciate you being here and spending time with us. Uh, Centurion, what would you like to ask David? Um, Wow, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. So, um, Southbound touched about touched on it earlier with the grips. Um, with um, what did you change about the design and the mechanics of the controller with um, some of the reported issues on the Elite One? Uh, I did see a breakdown going around about how you redesigned the uh, the bumpers themselves. And also, you've been talking about like vigorous testing and everything else when it comes to the controller exactly what were some of the uh, stress tests involved in testing the longevity of the controller? Uh, it's a long question. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, look, we, you know, I, you know, we don't really talk about failures too much online, but um, working on the bumper was, was a big deal. I, I, and, and honestly, here, here's the first thing. They don't fail any different than a normal controller. The difference is, do you expect more from an elite controller? Uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of issues about oh, it, it you know the elite controller has poor bumpers or something. But the truth is, it was the exact same bumper. <laughs> uh, we didn't redesign it. So to the point where I was kind of bringing up earlier, where there were a lot of things we wanted to do for either ergonomics, performance, quality, all these kinds of things where you'd love to put in any feature, you just don't have enough time for everything. So it's not that we changed it. It's not that um, we did anything wrong. It was it was more literally. It was the exact same bumper we had in the standard controller. But again, you know that doesn't mean that people don't expect more, and we shouldn't do more when it comes to a hundred fifty dollar controller and now a hundred eighty dollar controller. So we with the new series two, we did go in and completely redesign it. Uh, it is not the same bumper. It's not the same switch. It's not the same mechanism. It's literally not even the same materials. Uh, that you get on the standard controller, but you're paying. I mean, that's part of the paying a bit more. Is they 
they're higher, the, the switches themselves are a little more expensive. The materials we use are more expensive. Uh, so the idea is we're trying to make them where they don't break anymore or have any issues at all. We actually, one of the issues was, I don't know if you remember, they people said it popped out. And it's because there was this hook on the end and the hook would break and people said, oh, well, it's popping out. Well, we're like, well, don't fix the hook, just remove the hook. <laughs> so we made it where there's no longer a hook mechanism, let alone the switch itself. So there's lots of things we did on this one to fix. Um, so, but as far as the testing goes, again, what we found with the Elite, the original one was, uh, as dumb as it sounds again, we went, we were, I was on Twitter and I was like, I don't understand how these people are getting these failures. We can't find them in the lab. And the, the I, if you give me your serial number, I, I don't know who you are and I don't know like names and I don't, I, I don't know the, the gamer tag to serial numbers, but if you give me a serial number, I, I can actually look up like a number of presses and like how often it's been used, how many hours. And so I'd be like, Hey, send me your serial number. Let me look it up. And they do that. And I, 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 do it. I don't understand. They're not even hitting it that much. Like it's, it's a third of what we test to how, and then I said, we, we were testing it to failure even. So we're like hitting as hard as we could for as long as we could. And we're like, I still don't see the failures. What's the big deal? So what we finally did was we actually flew out to a couple places. Uh, me and my mechanical team, we actually went to people's houses that have these broken ones. And you're like, okay, I'm going to film you for eight hours. Just go play. Eight hours. And what we found was grip. It came down to the grip. And the way people were holding it, oh. the way they were hitting it was out of like what we found was the people that <laughs> made it fail were also the same ones that always played the same way, which is they would hit the button at this. They, they were basically bumper jumpers who did this weird angle thing. Uh, so, uh, so it wasn't the Cheetos and the soda pop. Yeah, that's, that's really, that's really Actually, that would have been my problem. Yeah, yeah, I still literally have literally a perfect controller. Guys, you guys hitting it at a 45 degree angle uh, the trigger, but they were also hitting it from the other axis at a 65 degree angle. I've and seen so, people do that too. Yeah, it was really weird. And we're like, oh, so we did the same test with like regular controllers just, just to see what would happen. And oh my gosh, they failed miserably. They were like, oh, so it's just the problem is because the percentage of people that play bumper jumper style that use an elite were much higher. So it sounds bad, but it, it really wasn't any more of a volume. So we went in and we actually created a whole new test. So the original question, we went in and created a whole new test where it's this little fixture that hits it in the exact angle these people were hitting it hundreds of thousands of times. Oh, wow. Oh, okay, so you're actually full on mechanically testing them, like having something push the button a thousand times. Oh yeah, you've never seen the videos. <laughs> I, yeah. I've heard about I've heard about it, but I'd rather hear it from the actual mouth oh, of somebody yeah. that does it. I'll take you to the lab sometime if you come in town. But yeah, you should see it. We have hundreds of tests that uh, repeat things depending if it depending what it is. You know, something like removing the topper it only does thousands of times, but something like hitting an A button or a bumper is hundreds of thousands, if not millions, like depending on what it is. So, yeah, you have whole machines that just hit and do everything. Like we test even how many times you're going to remove the paddle. We have a machine that removes the paddle like every, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of times and, you know, like removing the top and then doing spin tests, you know, so you basically, you know, that little ring that goes around it, around the thumbsticks. Yeah. That's because we have a test that if you take a standard controller and do it like a couple million times, it wears it down by about a million, I mean about a, about by about a millimeter over a couple million cycles. And so mm -hmm. we put that, we put that ring on there, the the little ring that's that that is on the housing because that fit, that thing that used to be about a million or about a millimeter after a couple million cycles is now zero. Mm -hmm. Uh, wow. that, these are the kind of things we were trying to put in, but yeah, no, we have like you should look at like look up. Um, heck, I think when I did the original Elite, there's a whole video of all the stuff we did in the background, and I I walked through the lab a bunch. I gotta check that out. So, oh, yeah, so, so going back, David, going back to the original Elite, how many how many are out there right now? How many is Xbox sold? Can you give us that info? No, not a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a, lot more, a lot more than people thought I could sell. I can tell you that. Great. That's great. All right. Now, David, obviously, we realize your time is precious. Is it okay if we just ask uh, one or two more questions? Yeah. Yeah, I got a couple more. Okay, fantastic. Now, 
Because I'm really curious now, because of the success of the Elite Controllers series, is there any interest in expanding the Elite branding over to other accessories? Because, hey, I know I'd be interested in some Elite Gear headphones. That'd be awesome. Uh, that is a very good question also, because that's another one I get. Period. I don't get that one as much as I get the XDL one. Um, the problem is... Doing like a heads like people always ask me about headsets and keyboard and mics. There's so like, many competitors out there. Yeah, the problem is our competitors are so heavy in that space that you're basically working on our brand at that point in time. And and again, we we don't want to do things just to compete, like just to compete with others. Like like we are heavily partnered with Astro. You know, like we're heavily partnered with Turtle Beach. Like. So to make a headset that goes direct head to head with their high end, I'm I'm kind of stealing from one to give to the other kind of thing because the, the volume, how many people buy those kinds of headsets are pretty small. So all of a sudden, if I stole half their volume, um, not that I could, <laughs> love my fans at Astro, um, but if I did, it, you know, it's, it's not great for anybody's business. And so we try to like kind of stay in our own lane a little bit. Um, it doesn't mean we ever would. It just means we kind of have to find a space where we could find that space where, and that was the beauty of this one is, you know, we don't license the wireless uh, radio to anyone. Um, so companies like Scuff and all that, you know, they, they just buy ours and modify it. They don't actually make a control. They don't actually make a wireless radio for Xbox. They do for Sony, but not for us. Um, so it, it, it was easy for us to justify why we, why, why we felt confident in that space. But for us to go head to head with some of our actual great partners is, is a little bit harder. Okay. It doesn't mean we wouldn't. It just means there's just not as much interest for people. Right. Cool beans. Right. Absolutely. Uh, Jeremy, is there anything else you'd like to ask? No, have a good night, David. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real, hey, real quick, David. Like, so if this is the if this is the last question, like I, I just have to know this because I'm blown away how people pl play. I'm I'm an inverted guy. Are you team inverted or are you just normal with that left thumb stick when you're looking up? <laughs> let me, let, I, I have to know. I just no. I think this. No, I am though. You know, I I do do a lot of other like other sports. Like I've always been like goofy foot when it comes to like surfing and snowboarding and these kinds of things. I've always been. I will admit, I am probably. Uh, the only thing I do really weird on mine is I don't do inverted. I, I do have a weird grip when it comes to my bumper and trigger. For the same reason I use paddles, you know, I I don't believe you should ever move your finger from your trigger to your bumper. So I kind of mm -hmm. use inside of my trigger fingers to hit the bumpers while I'm still using the triggers. So other than that, I don't have a really weird style, but that's the one thing that everyone's like, oh, I've never done that before. But... <laughs> Interesting. Oh, very I, I think it's very interesting how you talked about the uh, about how how people use that 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 angle and how they put pressure on the on the bumpers because I do see people do that when they play. Like I like oh, yeah. I see my nephews uh, and I'm on a watch like they they're they're actually like twisting the controller. I'm like, what are you doing? Like you know, what? it's funny, <laughs> but you know you have to you you uh, have to deal with all that stuff. But uh, it just goes to show you how deep you guys go into this and how much Dave, you care. David, you don't mess with Uncle Tim Dog's controllers, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know why I let my nephews use it. They do that thing and it annoys me. We, uh, you know, that one thing that I always, you know, the analogy I use on that one, it was always kind of weird was people are like, Dave, I don't understand. Why, why is this, you know, when I had to explain why, why we're doing things and why we're changing things, they're like, well, I don't understand. There's like, you know, there's basically like basic grip and claw grip and maybe like inverted. Like, what else is there? And I was like, Ugh. I mean, what I found over the past couple of years is grips are a lot like languages. You know, if you if you look at like the English language is like a, a ton of dialects or regionalization or these kinds of things. And so even if you've got a traditional grip, like I said, if you looked at my grip, everyone's like, it's traditional. But I've got this weird thing I do with my bumpers. I know people that like hover over their D-pad versus kind of rock it. I know people that put their thumbs all the way in the cups of the, the thumbstick versus just the edge. So you got these pusher puller theory and like, so it's these little, little tiny differences of every grip. But what we found is it's those tiny differences that make all the difference. Yeah. All right. All right. Now on that note, I think we'll 
kind of end things here. Uh, David, obviously, you know, we appreciate you coming to answer all our questions and hanging out with everybody here and in the chat. It's been a real pleasure having you on here and just giving us like all kinds of insight into the Xbox Elite controller and more. And we definitely love to have you back on at some point. Yeah, uh, yeah where can uh, all our viewers follow your endeavors over at Xbox? Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Just D-P-R-I-M is the easiest one. D-P. I don't know if I post it. It's interesting if people want me to sometimes. But <laughs> <laughs> most of the time I use Twitter just for work. I don't really use it much personal, so at least you're not going to see any stupid stuff. But maybe sports every once in a while. <laughs> Definitely. Um now, yeah, again, we, we really enjoyed having you on here. Is there anything you're going to be playing as soon as you get off? Uh, you know, I hate to admit this. I know Southie saw me doing this. I, It's my favorite jam. I don't know how I never played it, but I actually have been playing the Borderlands, like the original. I never played the original. Mm -hmm. And so literally tonight is the first time I get to play Borderlands 3 because I finally finished everything. <laughs> nice. I know that's yeah. like, I'm like I'm probably weeks behind everybody, but I, I'm even years behind when I never played the I never played one or two or two and a half. Like I don't know how, how I never found this game, but everyone's like, oh, it's the best game. And like it was. It was awesome. All right. Very nice. Very nice. Um, David, thanks again, man. We appreciate you. David, you're awesome. That was oh. awesome, man. It's the best he's, one he's hour and fifteen coast. minutes of greatness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anytime, hey, man. I appreciate appreciate you know the time you guys give me. I love I love talk, you know I love talking to you guys. It's always a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, congratulations it, to you guys, to you, Alan, um, Elliot. You guys did a hell of a job, and us as fans, we definitely appreciate uh, what you guys do in that hardware. I'm waiting in line to get my Elite uh, uh, version two as soon as it gets here. <laughs> just just thank you also, people listening. You know, David and, and his team. Uh, we all meet up after E3. Uh, we go to a, uh, you know a place and we all talk. It's a bar, um, and we've been doing it for like three years. Uh, we post it on Twitter. But it's that kind of stuff that makes Xbox different. Um, the 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 you know the interactions that we have, and we know so, so many people within Xbox. It, it's it really does feel different than what you'd get from just any other normal corporation and just want to commend you on you know being one of those guys in the beginning that you know was just open to hanging out with us just in regular life and just say you know let's let's meet up after e3 and get a drink and uh you know that's that's awesome stuff yeah definitely it is it is so, <clears throat> i love you know my my favorite thing is you know try not to act big you know we're all one community i never get even hyped about the whole PS versus Nintendo versus that. like everybody in general, we're all just gamer, like have fun. Like, you know, like, like, so I, I love hanging out with you guys afterwards and everyone else that comes. Like, it's that's where I get my best feedback. I'm not going to lie, good and bad, but it's still the best feedback. <laughs> Definitely. Ooh. And I don't know if you noticed, David, but Mike Yabara asked you to send him a controller. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mike, and by the way, Mike was always a great supporter of even the original. Like, Mike, 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 uh, he gave it to me as much as he took. Like uh, he 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 gave great feedback because you know once again Mike's in the same camp. Mike's a Mike's a hell of a gamer. And, you know he he loves the crowd. He loves it. He he knows the feedback that we're looking for too. That this team is dedicated to. So you know he was he was there from the beginning. Honestly, like he was he was a big proponent of the original as well as the second. So he was there for sure. It's awesome. <clears throat> Awesome. Awesome. Well, again, thank you again for hanging with us, David. It's a real pleasure, and we hope to have you back on sometime soon. Uh, anytime. Love it, guys. All right. All right. Awesome, guys. So Megatron, uh, you know, it's been a fun night, my friend. Where can everybody find you? Um, As always, uh, The Outer Worlds. I'm going to be playing uh, tonight after the show. Um, and uh, reflecting on what we, that's awesome show that we had today. Uh, thanks again for David for stopping by. And I'm on Twitter, Megatron underscore 1975. Hit me up. <clears throat> All right. All right. Uh, Southie, where can everyone follow your endeavors, my Cali friend? Um, he's in the penalty oh, he box. Is. oh no no he's not uh you know what yeah he uh he left out 
Ah, I thought he was in. Uh, Tim Dog, you know, we had some a really good chat tonight with David. It was awesome. Um, now, you know, hopefully we can follow it up with him at another point in time. Uh, where can everyone follow you at, my my Xbox fanatic friend? Twitter. I'm getting <laughs> All right. Twitter. At Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter. At Twitter. At Twitter. X Cloud, Beast Fire, whatever it is. <laughs> All right. Jeremy, where can everybody find you at? It's at on Twitter at Lone Master Who07. Uh, you can also find me uh, trying to scrounge up some more of these interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're busy at it. And uh, hey, we appreciate it, of course. All right. Centurion, where yes, can sir. everybody find you, buddy? Oh, they can always find me on Twitter and YouTube and Xbox Live at Centurion1307. Um, and always on Sundays right here on TXR Podcast, Thursdays on Saltiest Gaming, and also on Saturdays on the Shop Podcast with PTK Blam. Nice. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Shock Buddy, great questions tonight. Uh, where can everybody find you? Yeah, uh, you can find me at uh, Shock Nero on Twitter. Uh, easy Shock for Xbox Live and PSN. Good stuff. Yeah, South seemed to have, has uh, dropped out, so I'm not sure if he'll be back. But of course, I'm Invader. You guys can find me on my YouTube channel, Invader Gaming, and always on Twitter at Invader underscore one nine eight six. I'm pretty sure I didn't miss anybody here. If so, let me know. No, nope. going, no. going, gone. All right, just because I had a little uh, mishap last week, missed uh, Megatron, but hey, you know what? Seems like got everybody that's here. Uh, <laughs> it's been a fantastic group as always. Thank you everyone for coming out. Uh, Delilah HD, Clarence Flynn, Siberia, Next Level Gaming popped in, all kinds of people. It was great. Matt Jones, the Black Rider. Obviously, we had Mike Yabara pop in, Chollingsworth. D Black Raven, all kinds of really great people here. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And we hope to see you next week. Uh, we should be talking about some XO19 London news. And, uh, you know, it was a really great chat tonight with David. And it was awesome. <clears throat> it was awesome. We learned a lot. And I hope we hope you did too. So until next week, guys, it's been a blast. Yeah. As my buddy uh, Downer would say, take car. Everyone. <laughs> Take car. Wow. Take right. car. <laughs> On that note, have a good night, everyone.